Hey everybody, I am Cinnamon Cooney, your art sherpa, and today I'm going to be showing you how you can paint this gorgeous, really beginner-friendly candy heart. I know it looks amazing, it's so lush, it's got those pops of color, it's going to look amazing on your wall, but it's really easy, and I'm going to be breaking it down step by step. To help me do that is my husband, John. Hello. He's going to be making sure that the cameras are pointed at the palette and the canvas and everything that I'm doing, so as I'm explaining it, and I'm demonstrating it. You can really see it. On top of that, if you check the description below, if you, you saw the materials at the beginning, they're also going to be down there. If you watch on Facebook, it'll be on our Facebook events as well, and it's always on our website. Um, if you are here during the live show, remember to put your questions all in caps. Um, and the reason for that is, is so that the moderators can help you. A lot of times I have a video that answers a question. They know where everything is. I have a thousand videos. Yes, I do. So go ahead and hit that subscribe button right now because I have a thousand videos <laughs> on art, but they can help you find what you need. I'm going to be in here answering questions as well. So that's really terrific for you. We're also going to be uh, time stamping and chapter marking this so you're going to see it broken down into steps. Each step is going to tell you what you need for that step. It's going to match a mini book that we write out and release for free seven to 10 days after the show for download. That's, it's so much. I'm like, so I much. feel like <gasps> I just, my intros are long just because I give you guys so much. <laughs> and I give you guys so much because I know if I help you in this way, you can do amazing paintings. Nothing for you guys to do, but get your brushes and everything and come back and do this first step with me. So step one is going to be sketching in the design so we know what we're painting. I've got my surface white. A lot of canvases come prepped and white already, so you don't actually have to paint them white. You can at the step paint yours white and let it completely dry if your canvas is dirty or smudged or doesn't look right or you want to change the surface. But mine came like this out of the pack, so I'm not really going to touch it unless something happens during the painting process. I'm going to come over here and I'm going to use a really cool handy dandy tool called a chalk tool. This is Dritz Taylor's tool. And basically it's yellow chalk that sits in a mechanical pencil. You could just use kids chalk from the drugstore. It would be totally fine. I want to kind of center uh, my heart and, and need room to make the nice ups because I want to really take up a lot of my surface with my heart. So I'm going to do the right side first and then I'm going to come over and do the left side first. Next. <laughs> Not first. Next. It's very light. It's very light. And the reason it's light and I like it light is because it will let me um, change my mind if there's something I want to add or take away because lollipops do tend to be symmetrical and I want this again to take up a large amount of space on the surface I come across here now on the bottom we've got a little stick so I'm gonna make some vertical lines all right and those should go up into the lollipop because the stick goes into the lollipop and then I think it's nice when they have a bow let's see if what I do you think John yeah. Oh, there we go. I can adjust that camera a little bit to see that. So better. for the bow, what I like to do is come here and make a line across, kind of taper it down a bit. So it looks like there's a gathered ribbon. I'm going to come over here. I know my bow is going to come out that far. And it's going to come around and then come back, right? So to get perspective, what I'll do is I will, where it comes back to, I will come out to this far edge and draw that line and then join it back there. So it's a little hard, I know, to see with the um, with the yellow chalk. Are you able to get it, John? I made some adjustments. So I was you able made to some see adjustments it. so it's doable? Yeah. You've got this nice little bow here. And you do a similar thing over here, right? You're going to come over here and you just draw the outer edges of the space you want the bow to take up. And even if you do something like I'm going to come here and I will twist some of it, you will find that that outer line helps guide you. So if I bring that there and I want this to twist in a little bit, I just go like that and then join that outside edge. And then you can have little tails coming off here. 
where the tie of the bows come off and that gives us the basic sketch and you can check this on the traceable if you're doing it at home and you want to do it on a smaller surface an 8 by 10 is really great for your printer to do the transfer but this is something I feel like all ages you guys can probably handle a heart and your stick and your bow um, if you're unclear on the lines just check out that traceable I think you'll really really like it John that was step one now we're ready to go on to the next step So in this one, we're going to sketch in uh, with paint kind of and just roughly, roughly like work out the painting. I'm going to show you the materials that I'm using. I'm going to show you the color mixes, but they're super simple. I think you're going to really be able to follow along very easily. I'm going to get a square bright brush. This is a number 10 from the Art Triple line, but you can get any bright, anything that's about an inch wide somewhere in this range. It could be hog. It could be synthetic. For this point, it's not really that important. I'm going to get my brush wet and I'm going to start out with a little bit of Cad Red. This is Cad Red Medium and this is Quinacridone Magenta. And so I'm going to be using just a mix of these two. Kind of come in and uh, rough in the first red part of the heart. I'm using the edge of the brush. I'm going to just follow my chalk lines. And this is really where I'm going to figure out how I did. Mm. Did I do good? I think so. Did I miss it? But it's really adjustable right now. And that's the other reason that the white background uh, is really nice. And often this is true. Come across here um, with a black background. That sort of neutralized background really helps you. Remember, I can always come back and clean it up with a damp sponge or paint the background white again. So it's very forgiving. Yeah. I'm going to come around the stick at this stage because actually, while it is pink, um, the paper that it's made out of will show through the candy. And so you don't really want to take that away. If you just have one red, like you don't have both of these reds, just use one red. Hmm. Won't hurt you. To be unired? You can be a unired. No one gets to tell you what to be in your no. life or in your painting. If you just, and that's, that's just if one red, one shade of red. Yeah. If you just have one shade of red, a different shade of red, it's okay. This project is very friendly to lots of different types of paints and lots of different types of process. Now I do kind of follow the shape of my heart with my brush strokes. If you'll notice, like I'll curve, that's a subtle thing, but it can make a good difference on the end. Because brush strokes can imply shape. Oh. And come here and then just make sure I'm arcing that out. I like the brush strokes. The bound shapes. of the heart. So it's just one of those things, subtle but impactful. Is it? Hmm. Subtle and impactful? I think it's pretty. <laughs> I like it. Well, it we uh, did a watercolor heart and everybody. Watercolor heart lollipop, and everybody was like, um, can we have one of these in acrylic? And I was like, well, of course you can, because you guys are the best, and you get what you ask for. And thus a Sunday was born. Thus a, thus a lollipop was born. Lollipop. I'm hearing the song in my head. You know, there's a super awesome trap version of it. Is there? Mm -hmm. It's in my regular rotation. you have to help me find it. I'll put it up with the uh, reel of it oh, and the TikTok yeah. of it. That'd be cool. So you guys, if you're on Instagram or TikTok, you can look for that reel there with John's trap version. <laughs> <laughs> and you're see. just solidly painting just it painting in with patterns. With this red and just following the shape and curve of that brush stroke. All right, that seems. It's not that. It's just you know, try to get it painted solid. You don't have to be perfect with the strokes. Know? No, you don't have to be perfect with the strokes. No, but, but I mean, like, you should try to make the like the strokes, like you said, the direction of the stuff. Yeah, it's a good idea to have them in the direction of the the way the candy would be formed. 
All right. Now, that's all you got to do to get the heart initially roughed in. Uh, rinse your brush out, dry it off, and put it to the side. And I'll come back on the next step and show you what you've got to do after this to keep painting your candy lollipop heart that you absolutely can do. You can do this. So for this next part, I'm going to use both reds again, but separately, John, uh -huh. to help us see how the bow twists and where its shadows are. And that's one reason that it can be nice to have both reds. If you don't have both reds, what you could do is mix a second red that was a little darker by using either a blue or a black to deepen it, but just mm -hmm. a little bit. But however, I'm going to use my Quinn and my CAD and let those help me. And the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna load up my quinacridone on my number 10 bright. And I'm gonna come in here where these bows kind of go in and I'll go ahead and I'm gonna outline the bow with this color. I'm also going to really be thinking about directionality of brush stroke. And on the edge, and you can see that I curved that, and that really helps me. Now, it's okay for me to use this to kind of outline as well, because it kind of gives it a crisp edge. Mm. A little bit sketchy there, but I like it. I'm going to bring this down because the bow kind of, you know, it gets gathered. And then at the bottom, I'll stroke up just a little bit of the magenta. Coming around. Trying to keep that brush stroke working in, right? Mm -hmm. The directionality. It does help. It doesn't have to be perfect, but it's just a little tip or a thing that you can do to help your paintings feel stronger. I'm going to rinse out, and then I'm going to come back and fill inside these lines here with the CAD RET. Oh, yeah. Just a really pretty bow. It's going to be a really pretty bow. You're sort of curving the brush strokes around. Yeah, I am. Up here on the front, we'll just put some of the warmer kind of red right here. And again, it's it's going to take, generally I find for paintings to really look finished um, in the way that it looks to your eye, especially when you're up close to the canvas. Because mm -hmm. when you have a distance from the canvas, uh, sometimes even things that are a little bit messy will look okay. But when you're up close, you might feel kind of stressed about it as an artist. And I find that just two coats of paint really sort of gets you there. <laughs> and will help you not feel that concern. Right. That makes sense. I zoomed in so you could see the sort of, you know, brushiness of it. Yeah, and it will be. It will look real clean when it's, like, all done. But, like, at this stage, we're just, you know. Getting it in there. You can see I'm just letting the brush flow where it needs to go. Oh, yeah. It's just a bright brush. It's a, a good brush, but it's not like right. magic or something. You're the huh. magic in your brush. 
If you've never painted before and you're giving this one a go, one, congratulations and welcome to your art. <laughs> mm-hmm. uh, and also, don't be hard on yourself right now. You know, you're just kind of working it out. You can see at this stage, I kind of make any adjustments. Now, I might come back into my Quinn, kind of come from the bow and kind of blend some of this out while everything's still wet, just to give it a little bit of a mm -hmm. visual variance that I'm going to come in for more later. But just right now. There we go. That's really all we need at this stage. I'm going to rinse out super thoroughly, maybe even across two water cups to make sure all the red is out. Um, you're going to have your hands, the canvas, and this is like a good time to look at it. Like I'm looking at it and I feel like I could move this bow out a little bit further. Yeah. Um, sometimes in chalk, you'll look at it and it will seem like, oh yeah, that's great. And then you'll be like, no, I want to like kind of tweak that bow. So how I'm going to do that. How would you tweak? Well, I would come out just a little bit further. Oh. And just increase the bonus. Just increase the bonus. It's a, a bonus. So I don't ever get that stressed about these things at this stage, especially in the underpainting stage. And then all I have to do is when I come back, I'm going to move my Quinn a little bit up into this space a little bit later. Some bonus bow. So it will actually still fold correctly and do all the things that it's supposed to do, but it'll just be a little more balanced because it that... The actual bow I just painted is sort of like bows that look like they look when I tie them. So I want it better than that bow. <laughs> <laughs> and that's the other thing. Like if you look at your painting and you're like, huh, I want to change it, then just change it. It is okay. Paint dries. You can paint over it. You can move things. It's just art. Uh, and it's not going to hurt anybody. And you can do those things to customize it. Are you guys doing good? Mm -hmm. I hope everyone's doing good. Take a deep breath. Release it. If you have any questions, remember to put those in caps during the live show so that the moderators can see them or I can catch them. Um, if you're coming on the replay, just put questions on YouTube in the comments and I'll get those. Sometimes those are hard to find on Facebook later. You can always find these videos also on the website and you can ask questions there as well. So I'm here even on older videos if you're finding this a year or two from now. And I'm saying this today, but I know you'll be finding it a year or two from now. If you have a question, I am looking out for those trying to answer them. Uh, when we come back, we're going to underpaint the next thing. So the last thing that I want to block in is the stick. Mm -hmm. Uh, and I'm going to use two kind of different colors for these two regions. I'll show you how I'm going to do that. I'm going to continue on with that number 10 bright. All right. You could be using another brush. What you want to take away from the fact that I'm using the same brush again and again is that one brush does a lot of work. <laughs> but don't feel like you've got to have an exact brush. You just want to have a good brush that doesn't mess with you. All right. Let's get that good brush. I'm going to put this red water to the side because it's going to um, be coloring everything at this point. And I'm going to rinse out my brush. And the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to work on the stick. Now the stick is going to be a little bit of the red and white, believe it or not. Hmm. I a believe little it. little quinacridone in there. You just kind of want the lollipop color, but where it's a little bit creamier because the stick actually affects the colorant of the candy. Candy is a bit like ice or anything transparent that we paint. Now I might come here and definitely Give it again some use my brush strokes to talk about things like form. I'm trying to make it solid, but I'm also trying to make sure I'm actually at this point using the Quinn and the Cadmium. And I'll just go across. Just trying to cover the canvas. I don't have a lot of water in my brush right now. And I'm really applying the paint. I think I'm going to just 
I'm going to put that in. Now, where I come down to the stem down here, I'm going to have to rinse out. Uh-huh. Right? Really, really rinse out because I don't want the red in it. And this part of it is going to be just kind of a creamy white paper. So I'm going to take my white out here and just a smidge of my black. Huh. And then I'll go around the top of the knot. And just painting in that stick. Mm -hmm. right, you're just painting in that stick. This really looks nice large. Yeah, and that's that's kind of why I wanted to do this big so it was sort of focal and be bright in your house. Now this, where we're at right now, is mm -hmm. called an underpainting. Uh -huh. And an underpainting is just that first layer of paint you've got to get onto a canvas to do the techniques that are coming. And we're going to be leaning into the fact that reds are transparent. We're going to be leaning into the fact the way acrylic layers. So a lot of this is actually going to work out for you very quickly and easily just because of the nature of acrylic paint. So at this stage, I want you to dry it thoroughly before we do the next part. Okay, take a deep breath. Remind yourself that you're doing fantastic because you are. You can do this. You're not alone. I'm here for you. Remember, you can ask questions, and I want you to, no matter when you find this video, ask questions. A check for questions every single day. All right. John, you ready? I am. Do you think they're ready? I, I think so. I believe in you guys. Come on back, and I'll show you the next part. So guys, uh, I may have forgotten to say breathe out. <laughs> no, I don't want anyone holding their breath. <laughs> John pointed it out to me. <laughs> and I don't, I want you to breathe in and always release. <sighs> breathe out. So on this, I'm going to continue to kind of work on the bow and make it look all poppy and cute and realistic. I'm going to be using a round brush to do that. You're going to learn a lot about how color and value really gives things shape. Um, and hopefully that's going to be informative in all the things that you're painting. I'm really excited to put this on the wall. I was just thinking, John, I want to put it behind right there, mm. like during the holidays, like till it's like not Valentine's or whatever. Oh yeah. It'd be look real good there. I don't know. So that's the thing I'm thinking. I don't know what you're thinking in your life. This is what I'm thinking in my life. You ready to get on the next one? I bet totally you're ready. All right. So this is just a big round brush. This is a number eight round and it just means it's a medium sized round. It's not small. Like this would be a small round, you know? And it's not super large, right? So you just kind of want a medium-sized round that gives you some control. And I'm going to come work on the bow. I'm going to get a little of my, um, and I'll, let's put out some more quinacridone. All right. Quinacridone. And this is another reason why I put out two reds. I always try to have two reds in my palette, a warm red, which is the cad red, and a cool red, which is the quinacridone. And I'm going to add just a little bit of blue to that did you guys see that mm -hmm. that's all terrain blue right there in quinacridone and i'm going to come right here on the toe of my brush which gives me a nice crisp edge kind of fixing that inside where i move the bow and you can see that fixes real well doesn't it oh yeah so that's why i don't get that stressed on it it's like oh well you're gonna fix no problem and this is why it was a good idea to have it dry so you can do this nice kind of layering over it Works really well. I'm not trying to make purple. I'm just taking that quinacridone into an even deeper range. And kind of add a little bit here where the bow maybe gathers. And then also here where this might be casting a shadow on its friend, right? Mm hmm You can see I come in and I really work that paint into my brush so that when I go to draw with it or do anything with it, it really performs how I want. I'm kind of uh, shading the bottom of that bow. Maybe I put a little bit of a shadow right here.
Now my queen is transparent. Reds often are, yellows often are. And so when you have a color that's like that, you lean into it. You don't try to change it. You go, okay, where could I use those properties? And what we're doing here is kind of a glazing because we have the paint underneath. And again, I haven't made a purple, right? I'm not going all the way into a purple. Maybe put a little bit of a fold there. A little less here because there wouldn't be as much. Now I'm going to rinse this brush out. Rinse it, rinse it, rinse it, rinse. This isn't already looking that bad. Already you can see that form. Oh, yeah. Now I'm going to take a little bit of my just cad red. You can see I go with the direction of the bow. The grain of the fabric, so to speak. You can see that that just pops that. What I like to make sure when I'm teaching out here are online, and I've been doing it for a minute or two, is that I help you guys realize what makes your paintings work, like on a greater sense, like the fact that the two layers of red is what's making this work. Right. All right, this is where this becomes a very bright, cheerful bow. And I haven't even put the highlights on. I know. That really make it look like a ribbon at all. And I'm just coming in and putting that second layer in. And that's really all it takes, right, to look like a very nice painting. Really fills in there. Well, then you can really see the color is vibrant. Um, the values are clear. And you can kind of take that in. You can see, oh, wow, like the shadow of that and the highlight of that. I can really see that. When I come in and add the white highlight, it's going to be like the bowiest bow you have ever seen. Hmm. So rinse this out, okay? Okay. That's all you got to do on the bow until we hit the highlight. And we come back, we'll work on the other red, which is the lollipop, everything but its highlight. So you guys are doing great. Hopefully you're really enjoying seeing your bow come into dimension. I'm going to be going into the candy with you. Follow along step by step. I'm going to do a thing. You're going to do a thing. I promise at the end you're going to have a gorgeous candy bow and candy lollipop at the end of it. John, are you having fun? I am. This is all. This is going to be delicious in a minute. I'm going to use both brushes, I think, in this step, both the yeah. round and the bright. Maybe. So be ready to have those out. You don't have to uh, necessarily change out water unless yours is really dilty. Dirty. Dilty. <laughs> Dirty. <laughs> Dirty water. Okay, don't. I hope the algorithm doesn't tag me. Anyways, let's hop on in. <laughs> So I've got my two brushes from earlier out to put out some more quins. There's my cad yellow, my cad red, my quinacridone, my ultramarine, my mars black, my titanium white. Still just these colors. I've got to create a sense of value and highlights where things are rounded. And I'm going to do that using, uh, you know, uh, different shades and hues of this. The first one I'm going to do is I'm going to take out a little bit of my red and get some cad yellow into it. And it doesn't really... Um, Go all the way to the orange, but what it does is it lightens the red a bit. And sometimes when you're doing something that's very red, and I'm coming up here to the upper right, and I'm going to go around, so I'm kind of curving this. And it's almost a glaze again, right? We're a little bit glazing. A little bit right there, aren't we? I'm going to come over here. It's not a bright orange. It's just a little bit of an orange. And I'm going to come up here to the upper left. Curving my brush kind of makes a little shape like that and peers in. It's not bad. It's doing pretty good. I'm going to come in and get a little of my just red. Working this in. 
you can see this is getting quite bright real fast. Mm -hmm. And it really does get quite bright real fast. I've got highlights and everything I've got to put in, but sometimes you've just got to get some stuff in. Now, if I come into my Quinn and a little of my Cad Red, you can see I get a very dark red, don't I? Oh, yeah. It makes it look like there's some depth here. A lot of my Quinn. I'm going to maybe add some depth coming up over the right side. Come on, bring some depth up over the right side. A little bit of that Quinn. Come around. You guys have this curving that brush. We're playing the colors, aren't we? Yeah. Now this candy is starting to have some depth, right? Where the colors are wet, if I'm running my brush over them, that kind of merges them together and kind of blends them. So you get some dimensionality. Come across here. And I think maybe I'm going to want to darken up in there too, but first I've got to get some color on here. Now on here, I'm going to get a lot more of my white going. Like you do. I want to create a highlight. I'm going to come right across here. I still want it to be distinctly pink though. So that's important that it still is pink. It just looks lighter in relationship to what's around it. My white's gotten dry in the environment. So I'm going to add a little bit of water so it continues mm. to blend well. We're in a dry environment today. We're it's in like a dry environment today. 27% When we run humidity. the fireplace when I'm painting, it's like, it's like the extra challenge for me. <laughs> it really is. I'm going to come in and get a little more of my magenta on here, but still with some white, right? You're doing a great job. Just trying to get a little bit of that depth and dimensionality. You got it. So hopefully what we're starting to see is just a little shape to the stick. All right? That's hopefully what we're starting to pick up on. Oh, yeah. Rinsing out. Now, sometimes, believe it or not, a little bit of that sort of creamy pink is nice in the lollipop as well to show that it's candy. So I'm taking the Cad Red, the Quinacridone, and a little bit of white. And let's come here and let's, on this left side... Kind of coming down this way. Okay, I'm going to curve down. We're going to just brush across. See how we're doing? Mm -hmm. I'm leaving some of that bright red, but I'm just brushing that across. Now it's going to give some little bit of shape to the candy. Maybe right here. And then brush across up in this corner, doing those little brushes that go boom, 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 boom. Just lining up, following the curve of the lollipop. Mm -hmm. And come here and also add a little bit of a highlight there. And it's sort of a dry brush. See how it like allows what's really underneath to show through. I'm not just painting it all out. Mm -hmm. I'm going to rinse that out. I might get my round brush a little bit involved. And I think I'm going to need some more quinacridone, John. I can see that. And I hope this doesn't dry out on me before I'm done. Let me hit this with a mister. Mm, I put right. two sponges on it underneath just to, to handle it, but it was not enough. So if you guys have a fireplace going, that's really going to be a challenge for you. Um, if you've got something that's pulling the moisture out of the air extra beyond what it is, you can see that's just a real challenge. All right, so I'm going to take the um, quinacridone, and I'm going to make, not again, not a purple, but just that deeper red. I'm going to use this round brush, and I'm going to very lightly kind of glaze and 
brush over here just trying to get that depth of color. You guys seen that depth of color? Mm -hmm. Add a little white to it to kind of blend those two. Candy is kind of, you know, making almost crisscross strokes, just trying to create a rough effect within the candy. Mm -hmm. Stroke along the stick and blend that out. I'm using the brush to soften that and blend that away. A little bit like a blush there. Blend it away. I'm going to come across the bottom here. And this is almost purple, right? Mm -hmm. A lot of red, a lot of that. You doing okay? You're like, mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh, no, I'm watching wrong. Now I'm on the toe, and I'm going to just kind of uh, make a bit of a dark implication, like the candy here is uh, deeper and darker. Like on the toe, let's see, I'm wiggling it and just making it irregular. I don't take it across, just making a regular little shape. Let me take a look at it. It's looking pretty good. Look at that candy start to pop. Yeah. Rinse out a bit. I'm going to take a little of my Cad Red and some of my Quinacridone. Get that main candy color. Come along the edge with this, with this bright color. A little bit of that orange there. I'm just trying to create those little depths of candy. Yeah. The depths of your candy. Your candy should have depths. Mm -hmm. Just wiggling. You can see the red, red is glazing, and it just creates different little, little volumes. Back into the quin. Just come here. And they're all harmonies. They work well together. And you can oh, see yeah. I'm just making this brush a regular. Get a deep red going again. We're just shading that candy. Candy has the shadows. Mm -hmm. And we know what that is. Is it the dark side of sugar? It's the dark side of sugar for sure. Maybe a little bit more here. I think it's actually pretty awesome. Yeah. All the way around. All right. Look at that. Let's uh, stop there and dry it so we can mm -hmm. do the next part that goes pop, pop, pop. And uh, when we come back, we'll do that. So it might take me a different amount of time to dry mine than yours, though. In this environment, it might be really dry. <laughs> I may be done when we get back. Um, so just remember, you can always pause the video in the chat. I'll just keep going. You don't have to worry about that. You can rewind me anytime. It's okay. You don't have to paint at my pace. Yeah. Okay, see you when we come back. We're going to put some pop on the pop. So uh, while I was drawing and everything, Twix came over and she's feeling the lonely and she wanted to say hi because she feels like the new puppy gets all the attention and all the love. So I have to make sure that when she comes by and asks for some love, she gets lots of love. So she knows that she's always first dog. 
Mm. First lovely, lovely, lovely dog. So everybody say lovely, lovely Twix to Twix so she knows she's the lovely dog. She's so lovely. Mm. Okay, hopefully that is enough lovies for her to feel all better. Yep. <laughs> hopefully you feel better at home too. We're going to work on getting in the stem and maybe cleaning up the background and doing some shadows because it's all in the same color range. Seems good. Doesn't it seem fun? All right, so first thing, number 10 bright. Still a good brush for this activity. Yep. And you'll remember that we had uh, titanium white and a little bit of black. Uh, and that's what was made. Oh, goodness gracious. I got some red in there, so I have to clean it out. Oh. Sometimes that'll happen where you just have a lot of color on your palette and you get a little bit of the other color in there and you don't want it. It pollutes it a little bit. It pollutes it a little bit. So I need even whiter than that. I'm going to put out some fresh white so I'm not having such uh, paint management. Mm-hmm. Uh, stuff going on and that just happens sometimes it's normal paint management it's a struggle so making that nice light gray and i'm gonna come here and come across just like we did kind of earlier with the um stick that went in the candy now here i'm going to go on the corner and i may have to uh i wipe my uh, brush off on the towel sometimes just to get control of it so if you're like, where is she going with the brush? That's where. You can see we just kind of go there. Creating a little bit of that. Now I might wipe this off and then get some just white, white. It really does bring a lot of pop to it. Then I bring a little bit of pop to it, so we just kind of have that little bit of pop on the center of that stick. Now, at this stage, if you've got white, white, if you have anything on your surface that you want to paint or change, right? Like, I want to take the chalk out. This is a good time to do that. You can paint all the boo boos, anything on the surface that you want. Man. Huh. And you can make your own boo-boos, too. You can make your own boo-boos, too. So many boo-boos happening here right now. <laughs> it's a cascade. It's a cascade of boo-boos. And that just happens. You know, but we can just clean up anything we want. I'm just cleaning up any chalk lines that were bothering me in my painting. If ever you feel weird or bad about any of this stuff, what I can tell you is go into the museum and you like look at anything by like Mondrian and those canvases are a hot mess. <laughs> Just get close up on it like, Just whoa! Go, oh, like that's not neat and tidy. And that's okay. Now over here, like once we get kind of out of this side, which is the bright side of the surface, yeah, I'm going to come in and I'm going to get a little of my ultramarine and my black together, right? A little bit of those two together and back into the white. I'm going to do an interesting thing. I'm going to come along the heart here. Yeah. And I'm going to get a little more white on my brush. So I can blend it out, and I'm going to create a little bit of a drop shadow. Okay. More light. I'm going to wipe off on the towel if I need to. A little more white. We're just sort of blending it out. It's there, right? We see it. It's causing that to kind of drop, but we're not worried about it. I'll put some up here so I have some clean white to work with. Now, if I need to, I'll go in with my round where I've got to have a little bit more control. I'll take the black and the blue now here. 
along here. Now I'm using my round. That's just so that um, I have nice control right here where this is uh, close to the ground. Mm -hmm. But for this part, right, I can kind of come out here. With my round. And then get a little more white. To blend my shadow out. And then this is a little bit away from the bow because the bow is maybe lifting up, right? Oh, yeah. On the surface. So we see a little bit of distance between that shadow and the bow. So it looks like it's, you know, a little bit here. It's a little bit, though. Notice how light it is. Yeah. That's key. So you're and not... this one is a little bit out as well. So what we said in the watercolor class, you're not uh, throwing shade. You're dropping shadows. Not throwing shade. I'm dropping shadows. That's right. You know, a little bit of the black and the blue. It can come along the heart. With a slightly darker color. Maybe another little one there. So see how we create a little dimensionality? Oh, yeah. Where, like, the hearts maybe popping a little bit against the wall, which is why it's nice to do this on the white, because we don't have to do localized shadow, right? Mm. So what that would mean is, like, the shadow is the color of the objects that it's on, right? So it's a deeper green if it were a green background, deeper blue if it were a blue background. Uh, let me rinse out both uh, brushes. And you can see it doesn't need to be perfect, perfect, perfect. <laughs> When we come back, we're going to add some highlights that are going to give this some pop, some real pop. And even if you're really new to painting, you're going to love this next part because it's what brings the painting together. All right, come on back and let's make this amazing. We get to do the last and most magical bit, which is the highlights. That's where your painting is really going to pop. I love this part. You guys are going to love the effect on your art at home. I know we're going to have a lot of people painting of all ages and all levels. So I, I, I'm always excited when you guys get to here because this is when you go, oh, oh, art is super fun. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so let's get you to that space. I'm going to get back to my round brush and I'm going to rinse it out. And I'm really going to be just using my white. All right. I'm going to be just using my white. And I'm going to come here. And I'm going to make a little sort of curved reflection. Oh, yeah. Okay. Just on the side of my brush. And it's okay if it's sort of rough. And then as I come down, I'm going to wiggle. It sort of breaks. I'm like, let's look at that. Oh, already. <laughs> yeah, it really is. It's just already. And let's say there's one right here. Right, and I'm again on. I'm working from the belly of the brush to the toe. Now maybe that's a little bit sharp, but then as it comes here, maybe it kind of kind of has a little bit of break there. And a little bit there, so we're just hitting those little highlights where light might reflect off the candy. And dry brush that down, and then you take a look at it, and you're like, "Oh goodness, my candy's looking super good." Maybe a little bit over the stem, and then oh. Let's come here and on the top of this, make a couple. Doesn't take a lot. Like maybe here. Little brush strokes down. Look at that. Mm -hmm. Little bit of satin shining. Shiny, shiny satin. Let's come around here. A little bit again.
Make sure there's nice depth. The reflections look good. Let's take a look. Candy Hearts is ready to go on your wall mm -hmm. with a little reflective satin ribbon. How, do we not love that? Man, the only thing it's left to ask. Is a signature? No. What? Will you be my Valentine? Oh, will you be my Valentine? I love you. Love you. Now, officially, uh, we'll probably talk about this in the live before and before shows and stuff that we do. You'll see this scheduled up. But uh, we don't really do Valentine's Day on Valentine's Day. We did when we were young, but then we just yep. didn't like being in crowded restaurants. So we actually officially officially celebrate half off Chocolate Day. But you still get to be my Valentine. Yeah, we're still Valentines. We just get we we're celebrated Valentine's because we're always late to the party. We figured we would just throw the party after the party, and you know <laughs> it's, it's half it's off just, Chocolate that's Day. That's when the flowers and the chocolate are cheap, and that's when we want to go out. You know, it's like kind of, I don't know if you're like me. Let me know in the comments. Like, <laughs> yeah, I celebrate half off Chocolate Day too. Now, what we're gonna do is sign this. This is gonna look really good framed. Um, I don't have one in. I wish I did, but I would recommend putting this in a bright red frame on the mm. wall or a black frame. I think it would look really sharp. All right, let me get my signature brush out. I don't know. I might go for the gold lame with angels. <laughs> you might. I know you. And I'm going to just do what I never do, which is sign it in red. But because there's so much red in the piece, it's okay on this one for me to sign it in red. It won't. Oh, yeah. It won't hurt it, and it'll look really good. And it, see, it doesn't even hurt the painting. It's no, like, it just. It's one of those rare times where signing in red doesn't somehow throw the whole piece off. Oh, my gosh, John. That was so much fun. It was very fun. Okay. So, you know what you guys need to do? They need to subscribe to the channel. Mm -hmm. You guys need to subscribe to the channel because we do these free art lessons all the time. There's always yeah. new free programs, new for like... We do whole courses for beginners, not just individual lessons. We have techniques and tips. We cover weird stuff. Like I just did the strangest two trees and with brushes to review the brushes. Like you just never know here what's going to happen. Easiest place to find all that stuff is on our website. Right. And if you want to come to one of the live pre-shows, you want to hit that subscribe button mm -hmm. so you get that notification and be sure to stock the channel and hit those reminders. Remind, remind. Go to the website, subscribe to the website so you get the newsletter. Mm -hmm. You know, do the human things. All those human -y things. Now, and here's the most important thing. Share your painting with me. Share it on Instagram, share it on TikTok, share it on Facebook, share it on Twitter, share it on Pinterest, wherever you are. We're even on Discord. Share your painting. Mm-hmm. Share it with us because I love to see what you guys do. And it lets me know how I'm doing as a teacher. And so I can grow. I love your feedback. I hope you guys are having a good Valentine's this year. And you know what I really hope, John, before What's we go? That? that it's one that starts with self-love. Yeah. I hope you are in a good and honest romance with yourself right now. And that, of course, you were surrounded by love by others. Be good to yourselves. Be good to each other. And I want to see you at an easel really soon. Bye-bye.